Would you like to learn a little bit about the brain? A little bit about, come on. Who wants to be a human brain? It all takes place in here, ladies and gentlemen, the human brain. I'm here to provide an antidote. Uh, Speaker's Corner, the home of free speech in the world, is full of people talking about all sorts of things. And I've been coming down here my whole life and enjoying listening to people having a good rant about whatever it is they wish to think about. And it is very religion heavy. But I am a neuroscientist, and so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the brain, but I'm not going to be telling you in the kind of dorking style, science is right and religion is wrong, because I personally take a middle line. The way I see it, religions have been studying human nature for millennia. Humans have only had the tools to scan brains for decades. But it's possible that the two worlds can come together and we can take the best stuff from the worlds of religion, all of the religions, no one particular religion, and we can take the best bits from the world of science and we can pick a mix and just find a way to move forward in a way that's better for our physical and mental health. So here's the thing. As students of human behavior, the religions have chanced upon some incredible guidance in terms of what is good for us. If we follow certain rules, let's take the seven deadly sins, for example. If we don't do those seven things, it's good for our physical and mental health. Why? Because if you don't do those seven things, then you will tend to get on better with your community. And if there is one thing that erodes physical and mental health, and this is science, it's feeling lonely. It's isolation. Now, science can tell you a lot about why this is, it can talk to you a lot about the circulation of cortisol, the stress hormone, which is designed for use in short spurts to provide you with extra physical and mental energy to get through those periods of stress, to deal with the cause of the stress and then get on with it with lower levels of cortisol. And in the lonely, those levels of cortisol stay incredibly high and it eventually wears you down because you're in a chronic state of high alertness and your body is constantly ready to deal with a problem. Now, when it comes to reducing those levels of cortisol and improving your physical and mental health, religions are arguably much better equipped to help give people a sense of belonging. You can walk into any church, any synagogue, any temple, any... What have I missed out? Mosque. What? Mosque, sorry. Very rude of me. But if you go there and you take the time to learn and speak to other people around you and you take an interest in their teachings, after a period of a few weeks, you will become accepted as one of them and you will feel less alone. If you feel less alone, you genuinely... Some people don't have family. Some people don't have loved ones. But those people can go to a house of religion and in just a few weeks, they will feel like they belong. That actually makes them feel better. That means that they can make a heaven of their life on earth just by not worrying unnecessarily. By having that sense of community, you can feel better. It will improve your physical and mental health. You can walk into a science uh, lecture and you can be feeling alone and you will learn a lot of fascinating stuff. But when you leave that science lecture, you will feel exactly as lonely as before you went in because scientists aren't the most friendly and uh, outgoing people, sadly. I am one of them. I apologize for us, but we spend too much time reading books and learning about science. So let's take the seven deadly sins. Pope Gregory the Great it reigned between uh, 590 and 603 as the Pope of the Christian religion. And he took all of these various sins, very complicated sins. Uh, there were so many of them, you couldn't remember them all, but he boiled it down to seven. Now, a guy called, called George A. Miller in 1956 published a paper that was called The Magic Number Seven, Plus or Minus Two. That's comedy in the world of science. But what that related to is the fact that our working memory, the amount of information we can hold in mind for long enough to do something with it is limited to seven items. Seven items, plus or minus two. If you try and remember 10 things, for example, some of them will fall off the end. You won't be able to keep them all in mind simultaneously. As it happens in the modern world, our retention has diminished somewhat. It's now more like four or five items for the average person. But that's a different story. This is about how Pope Gregory the Great, it, I, he, he was Pope between 590 and 603. I don't know when he uttered these words, but he said, he described 
pride as being the queen of all the sins. And once your heart has surrendered to pride, then all of the other seven principal vices will take you over. So, what are Pope Gregory the Great's seven deadly sins? Who's seen seven?